Most of us, especially if you clicked on this video, like to do something worthwhile with our time, want to achieve something in our lives. And very often we connect that to the notion of being a high achiever. But what does that really mean? So in today's video, I want to explore five ways how high achievers think about the world, how they differentiate themselves and give you the ability to adopt some of those behaviors as well. Hey, very quickly, before we get into the topic of today's video, over the last two, three weeks, I've received a ton of love on this channel, from views to likes to comments to personal support as well. And I just wanted to say thank you. It's awesome. I really appreciate it. So if you are an avid viewer of the channel, if you're a supporter, thank you very much. Appreciate it. If it's the first time for you here, welcome. It's an awesome community, so let's do this together. Now, in today's video, we want to talk about high achievers, how they think, but we also have to figure out what it really means to be a high achiever. Now, it would be very easy to say that if you're a high achiever, you become rich and famous, but that's not really a true relationship. Somebody who is a high achiever is somebody who pushes themselves out of their comfort zone, who is dedicated to become their best self. And is there a price for it? Well, sometimes there is not, but you should still go for it because you will feel accomplished, you feel more alive. It's an awesome journey. So here are the five ways how high achievers differentiate themselves against others. So the first thing high achievers do is they listen to direct suggestions and they want to implement helpful advice as soon as possible. We often hide behind very vague questions. I've been asked a million times, how do you climb the career ladder? It's a very vague question because there are thousands of answers to it and every answer is probably specific to a person. But I also remember somebody who came to me and said, how do I get better at doing this particular task? And that was a very specific question that I could answer. I could give him advice on that. And not only that, but a couple of weeks later, the person came back to me and said, hey, this is what I did. This is how I implemented your advice. What do you think? And this wasn't to get my approval for it. This was more to show that he valued my advice, that he wanted to get my direction. And he was also on the best way to become a high achiever because on his mind, it wasn't just a question. He also paid attention to the execution, to implementing that advice as soon as possible. So if you want to become a high achiever, you have to do two things. You have to ask better questions and you also have to be prepared to put any advice into practice as soon as possible. The second thing a high achiever does is that they hate living below their own potential. They do not want to live a normal life. And what is a normal life anyway? It's the life that society teaches us is the right thing to do. And by societal standards, I could think that I have actually led a pretty extraordinary life. I was becoming a very young executive. I had leadership positions. I enjoyed what I was doing. And yet I wanted to continue challenging myself. Yes, we all sometimes get frustrated by the work we do or living circumstances, whatever it might be, but then some of us are not frustrated enough to change because change is hard and we rather look for coping mechanisms, coping mechanisms that help us distract from the fact that we are unhappy with the status quo. So we go into entertainment or alcohol or discussing politics, but not the high achiever. The high achiever knows that if they are unhappy with the status quo, they are living below their own potential. And that is something that is very hurtful to them. And so they proactively try to change the situation. So also for you, do not succumb to what society tells you is the right way. Find your own right way. A third thing that high achievers do is that they learn and they harness the power of technology. Everything is on the internet today. See, when I started the YouTube channel, I could Google this and I could put it into YouTube and I found hundreds of videos how to start a YouTube channel from the topic selection to how to set up your account to how to record a video with the right lighting and with the right audio and later on, obviously, the editing and the color grading and everything was there. And if you're a high achiever, you know that. You know that whatever you need to know, you can find online today in the developed world. So harness the power of technology for yourself as well. And it's not only for learning, it's also for any other part of your life. When I started my own business, I started to use an online account from an online bank. And now that online account feeds all the information into my tax returns. So I don't actually have to do anything about it. 
And it's something that high achievers do naturally. They look at technology as a tool. They look at technology as something that makes their life easier. So look out for those ways in your life as well. High achievers are also very self-aware. And the topic that I want to talk here about is called confirmation bias. See, once you've made up your mind about something, it's incredibly hard to change your opinion. I think I mentioned here on the channel once before a problem that a captain had on one of his flights when they put the landing gear down, the light that would confirm that the landing gear is down didn't come on. And so in their minds, the problem was that the landing gear was stuck somewhere. And so over the next 40 or 50 minutes, they tried to figure out how to bring the landing gear down and they forgot all about the other things that were pertaining to their flight. And the actual problem wasn't the landing gear. The light was broken. But because they've early on made up their mind that the landing gear was the problem, it was incredibly hard to notice anything else. And that happens to us as well. But high achievers, they are very open and honest with themselves. They ask themselves, could I be wrong? Is there another possibility that could be also right? Is there something in myself that is a weakness that I can address? High achievers look at their own weakness. They look at their own confirmation bias and they're open to changing. And the fifth thing that high achievers do is that they reverse engineer the outcomes so that they can figure out what to do today. See, most of us do things slightly differently. We think about the next step. I have to apply for the job and when I get the job, then I can figure out how to excel at the job. And then I get to the next career ladder and then I figure also something out that I like and then I get excited by that and then I go from there. And of course, if you haven't figured out exactly what you want to do, then you need to experiment and that's all well and good. But if you're a high achiever who already knows where you want to be in the end, rather reverse engineer the outcome. Ask yourself, in order to get there, what do I have to do today? I wish all of you that you can't stand the thought of living below your own potential. That you ask better questions, come up with better execution, harness the power of technology and all the things that we learned about today. And if you get value out of this video, then please do give it a thumbs up. And again, if you want to listen to more of self-development and growth topics, then consider subscribing as well. I look forward to seeing you the next time around.